trying to go natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is not a long video at all, but I just don't want anybody to say that they didn't know. And I find that it hasn't really been publicized a lot. So I'm bringing it here for you. I'm just coming on to inform you so that you guys know about what's been happening or what happened over the past week concerning the Shea Moisture founder and current CEO, Richie Lou Dennis. This group calling themselves Black Female Anonymous came out with some serious allegations against Richie Lou Dennis, which they said like he's been going on with this since the Sundial Day, Shea Moisture Days. So basically this guy who has amassed all his wealth by targeting Black women now there are allegations of sexual harassment and predatory sexual practices against him basically. I'm just going to read it for you so that you know and that you heard and that you can't say you didn't hear because I know a lot of people still use Shea Moisture. And just in case he comes out with something else because I'm pretty sure now he's probably going to be looking for the next thing to do. They didn't totally trash his career because they just they didn't bring out everything. So he's probably going to be able to go on and possibly target black women again. So just letting you know what was said so that you can take that into consideration when you support his ventures and he's still CEO of Shea Moisture. If you still go out there purchasing Shea Moisture, I just want you to think about this when you're buying and the guy that founded it, the guy that is the CEO, potentially what he's doing right now um, at his office when you're buying this. That's about it. Okay, so like I said, the group calls themselves Black Female Anonymous. On June 28th, they put out this blog post concerning Essence Magazine and the work conditions at the company. We are Black Female Anonymous. We present ourselves under the condition of anonymity for fear of retaliation, intimidation, and the maligning of our media careers. We demand immediate resignation of Essence Ventures owner and CEO Richie Lou Dennis. And then they go on to mention some other people. They call them the C board. They basically wanted all the C's, all the chiefs to step down to resign. So on June 28th, I believe they gave them six days from June 28th to step down and resign. And just keep in mind that they did. Or at least Richie Lou Dennis did step down and resign from his position as CEO of Essence after these allegations. So, you know, I'll leave it to you to infer how much truth there was. There were some people who actually came out and gave their names and alleged sexual harassment as well in support of this group. Um, they did have like some change.org petition where they got thousands of signatures, etc, etc. But let me just keep reading and let you guys know what they said he was up to. The once exalted media brand dedicated to black women has been hijacked by cultural and corporate greed and unhinged abuse of power, right? So here they give more about the awesome history of the company. I'm going to scroll down to where they talk about him in particular. New owner and CEO Richie Lou Dennis, Michelle Ebanks, Joy Collins, Profe and Moana Lou collaboratively immortalized an extremely unhealthy work culture. Scores of talented black women have been either wrongfully laid off or forced to resign from the company in the past two years. Essence C-suite leadership team strategically tells the market it serves black women deeply under the safe seal of 100% black ownership, but for the black women who make up over 80% of the company's workforce, they are systematically suppressed by pay inequity, sexual harassment, corporate bullying, intimidation, colorism, and classism. Right? Then they go on to have this chapter, The Truth About Richie Lou Dennis, Essence Venture Owner and CEO of Essence Communications, and I would throw in founder of Shea Moisture and CEO of Shea Moisture. He's obviously clearly has a thing for getting black women to give him his money because then he decided to buy Essence and that's where they really put their foot down. I'm really proud of these women for standing up to him. Richie Lou Dennis acquired Essence in 2018 from Time Inc. I may have mentioned it on this channel. I know I mentioned when he sold Shea Moisture and after selling Shea Moisture, he immediately bought Essence. Yeah, Richie Lou Dennis acquired Essence in 2018 from Time Inc. to advance his personal power and influence despite his carefully crafted public messaging. His surface level commitment to black women is driven by greed and a debaucherous sexual appetite. He has a history of sleeping with women on the Sundial staff the parent company of Shea Moisture, he sold to Unilever in 2017. And for the women who don't seemingly consent, he openly sexually harasses them at private company events. 
In the later half of 2019, Richie Liu tried to force Essence employees and contractors to sign non-disclosure agreements that exclusively protect his family from liability or disparagement after a string of wrongful layoffs and other potentially libelous business activity. When staff raised questions about the NDA, the executive leadership team launched a series of intimidation tactics on its staff. Richie Liu's wife, Martha Dennis, is the company's head of human resources, a blatant conflict of interest. Martha is complicit in her husband's abuse of power. For Essence employees under Dennis' family leadership, there is no possible way to share your grievances or frustrations when the family matriarch is the head of HR. Altogether, Richie Liu and the Dennis family directly and indirectly buy the silence of current and former Essence black female employees who fear backlash of Richie Liu's massive financial and social capital. And then they go on to talk about Michelle Ebanks. I feel like they were, they were having problems before Richie Liu came on, but his alleged sexual harassment, sleeping with women and stuff, that tipped it over the edge for them and that's why they decided to make a stand. Let me read this section as well. The truth about forced black female anonymity. Essence magazine is failing black America. When black media companies become unstable, it triggers the instability of the entire culture. Black women and men have long depended on black owned media outlets to service them with cultural identity, cultural memory, purpose and economic advancement. There is no intersectionality on race and gender in the new movement for a more equitable corporate America. The testimonies on Twitter and Instagram by a mighty chorus of brave black women uncovered the racial bias and discrimination in America's white owned mass media organizations. This led to resignations followed by recent corporate promises to do better. But black women at Essence have been forced to remain silent. We fear cannibalizing the narrative of Black Lives Matter and Civil Rights 2.0. We also fear losing our jobs or being banished from black cultural spaces. This is something I've said a lot, like anytime black women talk about anything that affects them in the black community, it's like, shut up, we have to present a united front, we're trying to divide us, like we can't talk about anything that happens to us. So that's something that I've long been saying and that's what they're saying as well. We can only look to the organized intimidation aimed at the survivors of Russell Simmons. The startling accounts of Drew Dixon, Celia Abram, Sherry Hines, and Jenny Lume, all black women who experienced sexual violence at the hands of Russell, have been culturally dismissed and disrespected. But what happens when your workplace bully is the same race and gender as you? Publicly coming forward seems simply foolish. White women can openly take down their devil and Prada, but black women must protect her. The demand for a new America calls for the complete accountability of all Americans, even those of us in black America and our cultural institutions. Black women deserve to feel safe both in white America and black America. We are black female anonymous, but not for long. Our hope is that this message assures the hearts and minds of every forcibly muted essence employee, past and present, that the change we've secretly hoped for is on the way. More urgently, we hope this message moves Essence leadership and the corporations who invest in Essence to action within the next five business days. And then let me tell you what happened within the five days. Basically, he stepped down. Essence appoints new CEO following allegations owner Richie Lou Dennis fostered toxic workplace culture. So he hasn't actually made any statement as far as I'm aware. Essence made some statements about it, but he hasn't made any statement personally. I can let you know what Essence said. The company announced Tuesday night that it had appointed Caroline Wanger to be the interim CEO and that they would launch an independent investigation into the workplace culture. So we had that Richie Lou Dennis stepped down, we heard that an internal investigation would be launched, um, but no accountability or acknowledgement beyond that. So you guys can make up it what you will. I already, my instincts, my intuition on this guy already, like that's how he makes me feel like, right? But. There are women out here alleging that Richie Lou Dennis is <clears throat> that Richie Lou Dennis has coerced or pressured women into having sex with him. That he has sexually harassed those who didn't have sex with him. And that that is the kind of thing that's happening at businesses where he is their boss. Just leaving it there. So in case anybody out there still supports Shea Moisture, still supports Richie Lou Dennis, you could actually be supporting that kind of stuff. You could actually be funding, giving him the power to do that kind of stuff to women. I'm just like, you know, do with it what you will. Because I know some people really don't care. 
So that's pretty much it. I'm just letting you know what happened. Allegations of just abuse of power, sexual harassment, sleeping with employees. It was just completely crazy and at the same time, I'm horrified but I'm not even surprised because like my intuition about that guy is nothing positive. So I'm glad I never spent another penny on Shea Moisture or Sundial products. And those of you that do, just keep in mind that he is the CEO, he is the founder, and whether that's what you want to support. And thanks for watching. I do bring you the hair reviews and I also bring you the news affecting us. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.